Uh, so the last question I have actually again segues perfectly into this. Companies around the world are reporting a dramatic increase into the number of cyber attacks directed at their staff. Is cyber security an issue you took under consideration after working, uh, switching to work environments? Are you worried about sharing documents that could breach uh, standards for sharing online and non-disclosure agreements? Uh, how has that been? I'll start that off with Thor. Um, I mean, again, we're an organization that is online mostly, and, and we, we do have a system in place on sharing sort of non-sensitive documents. Uh, and our approach to it, uh, mostly just from advice from people that are knowledgeable, uh, knowledgeable about cybersecurity is uh, that you need the culture. I mean, the biggest factor is human error. Um, so we try to to be aware of that. Um, but I wouldn't say that our worries are, are higher now, but it's something that we've always been sort of, we've always tried to be aware of. If I could follow that up, Thor, I, I think it's, it's similar for us as well. It's, it's something that is just more, I said, I think we're more reliant on technology now than we've been before. And the thing is, um, most engagement and, and to answer your question Derek about things like um, NDAs and things have been done remotely because you can't always get people to physically sign things because there could be um, I'm sure it's the same for you York as well uh, all around the world um, so you know it's it'll there'll be a big delay if you want to do things either face to face or via mail so we've been relying on digital technology to be able to enable those relationships to happen but so yeah it's it's, it's definitely a lot more um, it's, it's a different world already, which is quite good. So we've got some experience of that. Now we've got we've got to find different solutions to to things we probably could have easily, you know, had all the equipment in the offices that you have to now um, find innovative apps. I had a, a colleague today uh, to tell me about something called, something called Adobe Scan, which I've never heard about before, but it's now going to change my life. So they kind of learn about things you just you just never thought you would, which is brilliant. Um, and as we're experiencing right now, the the kind of the the side, the side about a bit of that that you might get um, some some more kind of privacy violations, but it's just about being prepared for that and uh, and finding ways to deal with it, I guess. Well, we have not not really experienced anything, and any of the projects we're involved with have not experienced any any problems of cyber attacks in this period. We have in the past, two years ago, and some some time in the past, and and I think what what is now really um, uh, is, is, is becoming more of a fashion as NDAs and uh, just to share a bit from my experience actually 20 years ago in this industry nobody really knew what an NDA was and uh, it was just the trust of techies who were in love with their stuff and sharing everything and uh, we were meeting at the IEC congress uh, to share the latest te secrets whether we're technical or business nobody cared right so that has changed of course however uh, NDAs and uh, the, 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 the measures you can take with regards to making the system safer to, to prevent from cyber attacks I think it is a challenge and um, uh, these days um, I'm quite quite sure uh, some organizations do but as a community we have to, to do even more so uh, take into consideration geopolitics which will not get um, uh, get easier Right, uh, so uh, we have 10 situations in several parts of the planet and the, and the, the, the crisis is not over. Uh, and that's one thing. And the NDAs, that is, I think that is kind of a soft end of it, you know, uh, at the surface. So everybody is sending NDAs around. I just received a couple of last week for kind of peanuts, stuff like that, even the NDAs. Uh, NDAs, there are different types of NDAs. They all have one thing in common. You can barely enforce them. Right, so it's just like uh, uh, it's it's sort of a um, uh, uh, um, a bit of a problem. Nevertheless, I think um, for for sensitive information, be it even in conversations and meetings as we have now, uh, as well as in documented stuff or kind of uh, all the way to hardware. Um, so uh, I, I certainly believe uh, uh, security security measures have to have to uh, have to be taken and have to be um, increased for sure. It's interesting for us, we know we're kind of quasi public sector with also the element of a private um, business. And, you know, there's very a varying degree of consistency between the two of them, especially in the last couple months. Things like Zoom, the council were, 
we can't use Zoom, so I have to use it separately on an iPad. I can't use it on a networked laptop, but yet our clients are all using it. So there's, you know, there's just differences between the two. And then, you know, space is such an international industry and we're all, you know, working, trading between each other. And for us, especially things like ITAR and um, some of the technical stuff that we're working with. Um, yeah, there's definitely a heightened sense of, of that, and I'm sure there will be potentially some, some new legislation or regulations that come through that this, via this as well, but we're already kind of starting to see that filter through. But yeah, it's, it's been interesting seeing how different types of bodies are using different technology in different ways, and there doesn't really seem to be one consistent thing. Um, we're either on Teams or we're on Zoom or we're on something else, and um, so that's been that's been interesting to see what will come out of all of that and if there will be any consistency, I'm not sure, but that's been our experience so far.